Apple, Arkansas Basketball Report. Sponsored by 1037 The Buzz, AT&T, All Clean Restoration Services, Crane Automotive, AT&T Real Yellow Pages, First Security Bank, Sonic Drive-In, JJ's Grill, Zaxby's, and the Log Cabin Democrat. Welcome to the UCA Basketball Report. I'm Steve Sullivan. Always a thrill to be alongside former Razorback great and now UCA head coach Corliss Williamson. I forgot your NBA career too. You had a great NBA career too. <laughs> hey, but uh, for the previous four shows, I've worn a short sleeve shirt. I'm trying anything right now, coach. <laughs> you get to the yeah. point where you're superstitious to get a win. You'll you'll do anything right now. We are. We are. I mean, we're, we're trying all, all uh, types of uh, tricks and, and seeing what we can do to kind of try to figure out how to win a basketball game. You know. Um, yeah, it's been a long time coming, so we're going to continue to work and, and you know, try to keep our guys motivated and uh, enthusiastic about coming to practice every day so we can uh, eventually get this win that we're looking for. You go through a stretch like this, it's easy to be negative, I guess. But as a coach, you know, this late in the season, to keep the kids motivated, you got to point out the positives too. You do. You have to point out the positives. You have to point out, you know, the areas where you see uh, them growing individually on the court as well as how we're growing as a team. Uh, and then you got to keep practice short. You know, you can't go really long because our attention span is not going to be there at this point in time in the season. Uh, but you try to keep practice interesting. You try to keep it fun and competitive so they can continue to work and get better. Are you at the point where you'll pick certain points of the game and show them the things they're doing well and we got to do them for more than just a three minute span? We have to get them done for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes? You do. You know, uh, you know during the course of a game, you, you get caught up in pointing out what you're doing wrong, but you also have to be able to come back and show them, hey, you know, we have the ability to play well, and then you show them a, a, a stretch of film where, where they're doing it, you know, where they're playing excellent basketball defensively and offensively. And uh, you just want them to kind of duplicate that for a full 40 minutes. I noticed last week you pointed out Jordan Harks. He did some things that you were pleased with. Yes, you know, Jordan has really uh, come back on as of late. I mean, he's, he's bringing that energy that uh, we expected from him. He's crashing the offensive boards. He's giving us opportunities to get second chance points. And he's rebounded the ball well. Uh, you know, if he continues to play like that at this pace, you know, he he's going to continue to get better, and it's just going to help him and us in the long run, not just for this season, but going forward in the future. You talk about going forward in the future. Uh, you have still have a shot at postseason play, I guess, if you win out. But you're also thinking about next year, and uh, you want to get the team that's going to get you over the hump. So this is important for these players to show you, you know, that they want it and uh, they're advancing this, you know you know, final two weeks of the season. Right, you know, we're, we're building a program. And to build a program is going to take some time. And, and the thing about that is you want to finish the season out strong. Whether you're winning uh, or, or losing or the season's not going your way, you want to finish strong, especially for those young men who are coming back next year. You know, you want to have something to build on, some momentum going into the uh, off season and the preseason of next year by ending on a good note, playing well, showing guys, you know, hey, you've progressed from this point. Uh, at the beginning of the year to now, let's see if we can get you better before next season comes and we can uh, continue to improve our program. You mentioned before we started taping, they're not only preparing for the next opponent, you're recruiting right now. Yes, yes, we are recruiting. I mean, that means uh, you'll drive. To take yeah, it yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the road, but, um, you know, we have to, we're going to Thibodeau and, and on the way we're going to stop. We're going to do some recruiting, a couple of coaches and I. And, on the way back, we're also going to make some recruiting trips. And you know, this is the time of year when the high school kids are, are finishing up their, uh, their, their their conference play, getting ready for for their tournament. So we, this is the time we get a chance to get out and see them play before uh, before our season ends and theirs. All right, let's talk about the games. When we come back on the UCA Basketball Report, we'll talk about the game. I'm Jay Myers with Crane Buick GMC, the GM giant right here in Conway. We're proud to support the UCA Bears. Come let us show you that we're the best place in the state of Arkansas to buy your next vehicle. Best selection, best service, and best prices. Come see our full service dealership, bring your UCA ticket stub and get an extra $500 off or 10% off any service visit. The GM Giant loves Conway and the UCA Bears. Crane Buick GMC, 1003 North Museum Road. Go Bears! CraneTeam.com Hello? Hello, Todd. Just calling to let you know I'm giving you the silent treatment. So you're calling to tell me you're giving me the silent treatment? Um, yeah. Jen, this is like the eighth time you've no, called. No, it's fine. My family has free and limited mobile to any mobile minutes from AT&T, so I can call all I want. I don't think you understand how the silent treatment works. Hello? Buy unlimited messaging and get free unlimited calling to any U.S. mobile on any network. AT&T. 
Welcome back to the UCA Basketball Report. Corliss, you're a guy in your career had never had problems scoring the ball. How frustrating is it to watch your team, it seems to be on a nightly basis, go through an important stretch of the game and have trouble, even when they get good looks, putting it in the bucket? You know, that, that, that's a frustrating time. You know, when, when you have the ability to, uh, to score the basketball, you don't take advantage of it, uh, especially when there are shots that, that come within, you know, two or three feet in the paint. Uh, it makes it difficult for uh, you as a coach because you feel like you're getting your guys good shots, but we're just not able to capitalize on them. How much of it, your score, how much is a mindset, knowing you believe in you're going to get it done? And how much is just not getting good shots? Or right, right. It, it is a mindset. I mean, especially when you're getting good shots. Uh, you know, I think our guys sometimes get get a little timid. They don't want to get their shot blocked. Everybody's worried about that. And we try to stress to them. You know, Michael Jordan got his shot blocked. You know, I'm not in Michael Jordan's class. I have my shot blocked. But you keep going and attacking the basket, and you go up strong, and you're able to make some of those shots eventually. And we have to get our guys to where they can believe in themselves when they do attack the paint because. We get them a lot, a lot of shots inside the paint. You tend to look at the numbers and say, you know, what did we do wrong? What can we do better? Uh, in this game, they shoot 32 free throws. You shoot 14. Yes, uh, another one of those uh, nights where you know uh, officials just don't like you. You're not getting any calls. I don't know. I, and I'm, <laughs> they seem I, like a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. You know, I, I don't I don't say too much to them unless it just gets it way out of hand. But um, you know, to me, it also goes back to how we attack the basket, you know. Um, and that's why we miss a lot of layups because we're really not going as strong as we can. Uh, we'll get in there and try to change our shot to maneuver around guys or, or quick a shot up. And uh, if you're going strong, you may have an opportunity to make the shot but also get fouled, and we're missing out on those opportunities. You've had games in the past on the road where you've struggled out of the gate, but you got to a pretty good start and very competitive in the first half against Sam Houston State. Yes, you know, our guys came out and they were really focused and. and and uh, ready to, uh, to to play basketball that night. We thought we uh, would give ourselves a chance to win, to see that Jarvis going to knock down a good shot. Uh, we were able to pressure the team full court, uh, and it gave us an opportunity to score the basketball. And you look at the numbers, uh, Garner had another good game, 16 points, six rebounds. Uh, Robert Crawford pitched in 12. Didn't get the performance probably from the Quentin Miles that you would like to see on the road. No, no, you know, Miles didn't, uh, didn't score the basketball. Uh, that well, but um, you know he he did play hard. I mean I, I give him credit on that. He he played hard for us at night, uh, but you know he was one of the guys that, that struggled on on making those layups. And um, you know with, with his athletic ability, you know we tell him he needs to attack the paint. Uh, if he can go in there just like Anthony Borden finished that shot, you know it, it'd give us a lot of momentum and, and we really encourage him as he uh, attacks the basket. You look at the number of threes you shot, 24 threes. Way too many shots from the three-point arc, uh, you know, and that's been something that we've been on our team about. You see DeJuan Claiborne knocks one down there. Um, but he was two of ten. It was two of ten, yeah. you know. And when you look at the numbers, you know, we'll come out, we'll maybe make one or two, and, and, and guys start to think that they're on, on fire, they're hot, and we end up taking bad shots, and we kind of forget how we made those shots. They were, when you catch it with your feet set and somebody's penetrating, you pitched it out to you rather than trying to create the shot on your own. You look at the first half numbers, not horrible. Shot 38% from the floor, 40% from three-point range. It was the second half where you went three of 14 from three-point range and only shot 26% from the floor. Right. You know, that second half, you know, when you go through that spell where you're not scoring the ball, making your layups, sometimes guys think they have to uh, uh, make the game up in one play. You know, I, I try to stress to our guys, there's, there's no such thing as a 10-point shot or an eight point shot. You know, you have to constantly chip away at the game. You know, you don't have to shoot threes just to catch up. You can attack the basket and get to the free throw line. There's other ways to score. And that could be a tendency for a team. When you get down, you want to get those points. You realize you can, you know, if you hit a couple of threes, you can cut into that deficit, but it can go the other way too. Yes, it can. It can definitely go the other way. You miss a three and, and you know, a long shot normally goes out to a long rebound and uh, they're able to get that basketball and push it back at you in transition, and, and it makes it tough, you know. Um, you, you, but you really want to attack the basket, you know. When you have an opportunity to come off pick and rolls like that, that's now see, three. that's a good three there. His feet are set, uh, we drew the defense in, and he was ready to knock a shot down. And those are the type of threes that we want to shoot. How frustrating is it when you have a pretty good plan, you're executing, you're getting the shots, but you're not getting the results? Hey, that, that, that's one of the you know most frustrating things about being a coach and even a player is frustrating for him because you know you're getting good looks at the basket. 
Uh, you're executing your plays, and when the shot's not falling, it can make it difficult for you. Uh, there's another drive and kick three-point shot right there. Those are the ones that we have to have. Um, time was running down there. You know, Jarvis Knox went down. But uh, when we do move the basketball and we're able to shift the defense and, and catch our guys when they're wide open, we're a better shooting team. Now, following that game, when you visit with the team, the positives and the negatives from that loss? Well, you know, to me, the positives were we, we did force the tempo. Uh, we, we played uh, – at a pace that we wanted to play, we, we forced uh, Sam Houston to get out of their, you know, half court sets. We made them play in the full court, which is more to our advantage. You know, we uh, I believe we had somewhere around 20 more shots or, or maybe 16 more shots than they took that game. So we gave ourselves a chance to win. We just could not make layups, and that was a negative that I took away from that game. We could not finish shots. How hard is it to dictate tempo when you're not hitting shots? And, you know, it, it's uh, it, it's it can be hard. You know, it can be hard, especially if you're a if you're a full court team and, and you're trying to push the basketball and you're you're getting the shots you want and and you're not making them. It makes it really difficult to uh, to keep that pace up because on the other end, you know, you're gonna have to go back and work work harder on the defensive end. And if you're not getting stops there, it just makes it for a tough night. Now, where would you like the score to be if you were shooting, you know, 45 percent from the floor, 40 to 45 percent? What would be the wow. ideal score for a UCA game? If we're shooting 45% from the floor, I'd like to see the game somewhere in the 70s, high 70s, 80s. I think when we're able to score the basketball, we, we have an opportunity to, uh, to win a game. But when we're, we're not scoring the ball, when, when the numbers are low, say a 55 to 60 game or something like that, that's not to our advantage. You look back, Anthony Borden did a nice job finishing four or four from the floor and had you know, good production in 19 minutes. Yes, he did. I mean, uh, he didn't miss a shot in the first half. And, you know, we came back in the second half. We really weren't able to get him involved in the offense. Um, they did a better job of collapsing on him defensively. And then, of course, when the other guys were missing shots, it was hard for him to uh, get to the basket because they had some big guys who were really trying to keep Anthony off the boards. We took a break from conference play. Uh, Scotty Thurman's hometown got to visit Ruston, Louisiana. Unfortunately, the Bears couldn't come up with a win. We'll look at that game when we come back on the UCA Basketball Report. and great eye-opening moments. You guys are skins. <laughs> Need to regain your swagger? Our new taco stacks are filled with Moe's Famous Queso, two crispy corn tortillas, fresh veggies, shredded cheese, and all-natural cage-free chicken. Then folded and grilled crispy, making everyone feel tougher. Well, almost everyone. Moe's, feed the moment. <laughs> 